Uh, okay, so what I want to do at this point is kind of switch gears a little bit, but I wanted to show you um, I sent this email out to all of you guys and So what I what I did was I sent you this link to this site, and what I want you to do, and I think we can just talk about it here. Um, but I want you to. How many of you had a chance to look at this thing first? You did. Yeah, it's a little confusing because we have four different options. Yes. Okay. So let's take a step back here. So let's open up our access database. And this database that you've built looks maybe something like this. Okay, yep. you might have done something a little bit different. It doesn't really matter. But what I was after here is so that you can begin to see how this data is laid out from an Excel spreadsheet perspective. So what's happened here is that the names of the drivers over in this world became the names of the tables. That's not how the world works. Okay? So the world works on databases that utilize a table to store the name of the thing. Not the tables being named after the thing. Imagine if if every ta every uh, every um, crayon color were in a different table. Oh my God. That doesn't even make any sense. No. no. That doesn't make any sense. So there's a table for all of the colors of the crayons. Also but, like similarities too. I mean, some of these could have been different. Absolutely. Absolutely. But when you're working with Excel spreadsheets though, it doesn't really work that way. Because you can't, you can't do it that way. And that's why Excel is a really bad road to go down. It's a good road to start with because there's not a lot of overhead with it. You can get going with it pretty easily and people can understand it and they can see the data until you run into millions or billions of things. And in this particular case, there's, there's not a lot of, there's not that much data in here really. Um, there's, it looks like there's a lot with the way that it's laid out, but there's a lot of duplication that occurs in here. How many different drivers would you say there are? Or different types of products? Lots. Uh, about 100. 100, okay. So how did you come up with that? Um, those are the only cases. <laughs> okay. All right. So we can we can see all these different releases here right five five four six whatever all that stuff really means but if we come down here and we look here how many drivers do you see <laughs> you get two of them in there you got five of them in there Which have the same name. and they all have the same name but they, have different types. they have different sorts of product names to them so those look different Let's go back to this other one here. So G5RE, G5RE. So these are duplicated in between these. These are the driver names and the product names. So how many records are in here? 133. 133, okay. If we look in this other one, we could see 134. There's duplication in between these. 166, and then you can see all the duplication here as well. Okay, so you can see the LGR 25s. So they have different characteristics to them, though. So it's kind of like a car. Just because you bought a awesome. So just because you bought a Cadillac, yeah. is that the type of car that you have? No. No. It's a different type of model. Model. Like what? Give me an example. GXT. Okay, there's a GXT Cadillac and it has leather seats in it, but Garrett has the version that doesn't have the leather seats in it. 
He's got the premium Velcro seats so that he doesn't need seat belts anymore. <laughs> That's a pretty funny idea, isn't it? It's <laughs> pretty funny. Might be bad if it catches on fire. <laughs> I can't get out. <laughs> okay. All right. So all of. <laughs> that should be a horror movie. A world where seatbelts are a thing, but you have to pay extra for them because they're patented. <laughs> because that was a real thing. Optional seatbelts in the 60s, yes. Yeah, my dad had that that's, car. That's the scarier yeah. one. Yeah, that, that was the thing. Yeah. Okay, so we, we have a, a bunch of different names for things that are the exact same thing. We have them in different releases of these different drivers. Okay, so... This is difficult to get your arms around, okay? Yeah. It's kind of confusing. Am I right? Yes, it's very confusing. Okay. The fact of the matter is, though, that there's, there is a way to associate things with things. It's just you have to know the data. Yeah, you, 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 you do. You have to know the data. But, but on the scale of 1 to 10, how complicated... Um, is this given the number of items? If I locked you in a room for three days, would you be able to retype all of this stuff? Yeah. 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 You 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 pretty much could yeah. by hand. Yeah. Now we don't really want to do that, um, but what we want to do is we want to try to begin to understand this data in what's called a normalized fashion. So when we say normalized fashion. If I go come back here to this website, whoa. can you close that? Um, so, yeah, he had a lot of things going on here. He was trying to decide what he wanted to do with them. Right. So there's a lot of different ways that you can begin to understand the data, but let's just stop and think about this for a moment. How many, how many places in the universe have products? <laughs> Almost every day. Right. Yeah. CWC has products. Everybody has products. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, we, we, all, we, we kind of all do, actually. Well, sure, we offer services. Yeah. So, so these products, these products also have attributes, okay? So the products kind of stand alone, but then they have characteristics about them that could be their color, their size, their weight, their shape, their um, whatever. It just depends upon the product, like how that actually works. So what this particular person has done, and I'm not saying that this is a great website or a bad website. It's just a good place to start because it has a, a nice conversation about this. So Casey and I have spent a lot of time talking about her driver issues, okay? It's a very real world problem. And the interesting thing here is that she doesn't necessarily just want to have this in a database. Have you talked to her about this? No. Okay. So this is a really important question for you to understand. You're not building a website for Casey. You're not building a database for Casey. You're actually building a database for these drivers so that somebody else could begin to utilize them. That's really important because you're not out to make the perfect website. You're not out to make the perfect database. N none of those things are true. What you're trying to do is to place this in a situation so that somebody else could actually understand this who was a, a software developer or who was a database administrator and so that Casey could understand it. So if you come down and you begin to look at some of his decisions or some of his grades that he begins to give himself, he explains you know, some of these really important things. Yeah, its performance grade is a C, but it's got a really excellent admin interface, which is probably going to be really important because Casey's is going to be using it that way. The Here's an end, end user interface um, way to go. Okay, Product table for each type defined. 
That would be crazy time. That would be crazy. Yeah, it doesn't really make any sense. No. Okay? So you can begin to see the breakdowns of all of this. And, yeah, careful of the conclusion. And you don't need to know anything about NoSQL at this point. We're not going to get into that too much. Yeah, and that's where I was actually finding some of the really most interesting stuff was down here. There's 13 After comments. Yeah. yeah, so he published the article, and these guys are reflecting on what he's done. Yeah. And I think that this is a critical piece for you guys to be able to take a look at. Um, this is a good article, blah, 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 most flexible product attribute schema. Uh, what's a schema? kind of like the design, right? So if we come up to here, this is the schema, basically. Oh, okay. okay. That's a schema. That's a schema. Schematic? No. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. So, um, sometimes people call them databases, but databases can have multiple schemas that may or may not interact with one another. So <clears throat> if we come down here, um, I would recommend that you look at some of these. You're going to have some questions. Um, and knowing what some of these things mean, mm, it might, might be a little bit difficult, but you can begin to get a basic understanding of some of the questions that folks are asking. <laughs> What did you end up doing with this? I didn't take it any further. However, here's how, where I was heading in my thoughts. I was going to leave the product information to where it would be handled better. A NoSQL type solution, a document database of sorts. The thinking behind this is products can change over time without burdening SQL. I'll have to come up with another article to cover my thoughts in depth. That's beyond the scope of this class to go into that world because he started off in a relational database. He didn't build it, but that's how he organized the data. Okay? So what I wanted to do kind of briefly here was to try to help you make sense of the schemas here. Okay? So let's, let's just go with... Uh, I think we can we can actually go with this one or this one. I guess we could just go with the first one. Okay. Okay. So you, what's that? He said that one might be a little challenging. Okay. Is there one that you might want to think we could use? Um, I don't know. This one here, okay. And part of part of the reason why Sally can say she thinks this is uh, a good one is she's read through this article a little bit. So essentially, there's one table, two tables, three tables, four, five, six, and then you can begin to see the relationships between these. And if you look really closely, let me zoom in on this. But you can see the one, so this means a one on the side right here. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. What did I just do? Up the image. I was wrong. I didn't realize it was clickable. Yeah. But you can see these these little marks here. So it's like uh, three lines, mm -hmm. and it, what that means is that that's a one one on the product type to many product relationships. Okay, so one to many. So the product type could be related to multiple product type attributes, and the product type could be related to multiple products. So give me an example of that. Make up your own product. What's a product? Magic underwear. Magic, <laughs> magic <laughs> underwear, okay? okay so and what would the product type be for that? Undergarments. It would be an undergarment, okay? So an undergarment could be related to many products because you might not have all you, you might sell more than one product besides magic underwear. You might have magic bras, magic bras right? <laughs> and and each 
each one of those products over here would, in the product table, would be associated back to that undergarment product type. Okay? All right, so now let's follow the line here. Okay? Let's go down to the product type attribute value. Okay? What's this about? The attribute this is actually just a connector table that gives you an ID. All of these are just ID, so there's only numbers in here. It's a reference table. Okay? Yeah, kind of like a catalog ID number. Yeah, yeah. kind of like that. You're just not adding it all into the product table here. Okay? Those would be connected down to the attribute values. Okay? Yeah, so this, this allows you to be able to connect the dots, basically. And so you can see where you've got the many, the many, the one, the one. So the product ID and the attribute value ID would then connect all those pieces together. Hmm. Okay? Now, this makes it look pretty simple. It's, it's a little harder to... You know, it's not hard to type these things into an access database. I mean, no. what do we need to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is this is pretty straightforward. So let, let me go back here. Let's create a new database. Let's just do, we'll just kind of pretend like we're doing this. Okay. Um, we'll call this sample one. Um, Magic underwear. Magic <laughs> underwear. <laughs> Okay, all right. No, 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 no. <laughs> M-A-G-I-C-K. Oh, jeez. I thought I-C-K. That wasn't. Oh, yeah, I'll do we that. Trademark yeah, I'll do that. Okay. A-G-I-C-K. <laughs> 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 it actually is pretty important to get these things the way that you want them because it's kind of difficult to do that after the fact. You can also see down here the different types of databases. This is really important. This is more important than what you'll know because 2000 and 2003 were not relational databases. Okay? They were kind of bastardized versions of relational databases, but they were really just flat files. I wouldn't call 2007 to 16 like rock star relational databases, but at least they did it kind of. Right. Okay, so if I go to create this. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Okay, <laughs> all right, so here's, here's my new database. Okay, so we're going to create what? All right, we've got a table up right now. We can come back to our reference sheet right here. And if this is what we want to do, we can call this the product table. And we're going to put in these one, two, three, four, five fields, right? right. Mm -hmm. And you can begin to see the pattern that's get, getting established here, though, okay? So the product table has a product ID. And look at the capitalization of these words. Look at the product type table, how it's spelled, how it's capitalized, how its fields are named. And you can begin to see kind of the um, the patterns between all of these different tables here. I think that's really lost sometimes. And when people go off the rails and they start doing things differently, it gets really confusing just to look at. So to keep your patterns is very, very important. Make sure you spell properly and make sure you keep your, if you're going to use an init cap kind of pattern here, um, there's other ways to describe that, but you can see the initial word for, or e the initial letter for each word is capitalized. And that becomes pretty important. Keep your names of your fields. So the product type ID, the attribute value ID, you can see that ID is all cap. You don't have to all, all cap it. But whatever you do, just make sure you're consistent with the way that you're uh, you're going to be creating these names. So let's. 
I'm not even going to go type right now, but let's go in and just theorize on this product table here. Product ID, okay, that's obviously going to be the, the, the name of the... Oh, product is the name of that table, so product ID is what? Yep, and what would we call that? The primary key, okay? It's not going to be ID, it's going to be product ID because we want to make sure that we know that it's related to this table, okay? So if you use ID everywhere, it becomes really hard to figure that out. What about product type ID? What's that going to be? Look at your image here. Look at your image. It would be the ID of the product type in the product type table. It would, it is. It's the ID or the primary key of the product type table. That's huge. So would there be the secondary key? Yeah, what's that called? Secondary. It's not secondary key. It's not a migrant caravan key. key. It's a foreign key, right? <laughs> so the product type ID would be considered a foreign key. And the only way that it can exist in here is if what? The other table exists. If the other table exists and that number exists in that table. Which gives it a relationship. Right. And so and so that, that, those are some of the first things we did within Access, right? You had to create those relationships. Tell me about the product name. That's the third one in the list. Okay, so like, that'd be the name of the product, like, uh, yep. grab your underwear. Yep, your and, and yeah. look at all the fields in the, look at all the fields in the database that are listed here. And is there any constraint on this particular field, or can you type anything here? Yeah. There's, so if you look throughout these other tables, there's no other, there's no other place where this is being controlled. It's, this is the primary table for the products to be listed. Okay. So the name is going to be principally held in this table. What kind of field would that be? Not not the characteristic of it, but what type of data would you be putting in there? Data? Some kind of text, right? Okay, tell me about the product description. It's just a name that describes the product. Okay. Right. Okay. Flavor. All right. So let me ask one more question about the product name before we get any further. Would the product name be a requirement or is it optional? I would think it would be a requirement. You kind of got to know what it is. Yeah, you, you, you kind of got to know what it is or yeah. else it would be really truly magic, but that would be kind of weird, right? <laughs> so, so the product name needs to exist. And what we call that is a not null field, okay? Null means it might not exist, it's blank. Right? Not null means something has to be in there. Okay? And that, that really is kind of a database term. Not null. <clears throat> so the product name would need to have something in it. Um, tell me about the product description. What type of stuff would you be putting in there? Numbers, letters, mixture, things. Words. Words. That's described what the magical okay. number would do. Yeah. And would you say that that would be a requirement to have something entered in it or not? If you're trying to sell a product, yes, but in your database you may not necessarily need it. Okay. Maybe. Depends. Okay. So, so, do, so, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the magic underwear depends. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. All right. So, what I would recommend, since we don't really know, is this is one that I might not force to be filled in okay. because I don't really know. There, there's some names that I could imagine that might be so descriptive that you might not want a 
description. I don't know. Um, what about product price? Yeah. What yeah. is that? What is that? Yeah. It's the amount of the product. Okay. How much it costs. It could be either the cost to you or the cost to the customer as well. Okay, so yeah, you could kind of figure that out. You need to be consistent, whatever it is you do here. Um, what type of data is going to be stored in this? Numbers. Numbers, yeah. Okay, numbers. And be more specific. Currency. Currency. Okay, currency, depending upon the database that you're working with, they're going to store that a little bit differently. Okay, so it might be stored as a two decimal number. It might be stored in a particular currency. If you were in Zimbabwe, well, who knows, yeah, right? Know there price. might be other things to consider. <laughs> there might be other things to consider. So, so the product price should that be blank or not blank? Not blank. Probably not blank. And here's why: I think that the price could easily be what if there is no price? Zero. Zero. Right. Zero. So if it if it is zero, that kind of infers the fact that it's free. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So so it could be just a thing that goes with everything. Who knows? <coughs> All right. So let's move over to the product type table. So tell me about the product type ID. The ID number for the product type. It is the ID number for that table. Okay. And the primary key as well. It is the yeah. primary key for that table as well. What about the product type name? Name of the product type? It is. Which would be like Sean said, like the undergarment or something like that. Yeah. Okay? All right. And should that be null or not null? Not null. Uh, you you got to have it. Okay? What about the product type description? I don't need one, but it's probably recommended. <laughs> I, I'm with you, Garrett. Um, yeah, it's, it's an iffy because you know, anyway, it might just be no. You get it when you read it. Anyway. Right. And since this is a lookup table, I probably would require that this be filled in. Mm -hmm. since, since, it's, since it's not the product itself, um, I think. There, there may be a requirement that you would have that um, for some other reasons. Again, this is all up for discussion. Let's go down to the product type attribute value. What does that refer to? The value of the attribute. Okay. So we're kind of going, this, going at this in a couple of different ways, but each product is going to have attribute. attributes, right? Each product is going to have attributes. So let's start on the other end of things so that we can, um, let, let's go over to the attributes. So let's skip this middle table for now, and let's go over to the attributes. So what would an attribute for the magic underwear, what might that look like? What, what's an attribute of it? Okay, so the attribute ID would be what? It's just a yeah. unique number, right? The so attribute like one for y, two for z. No, no. You, this would be just a number, like unused number only for the database. So that would be the attribute ID. You wouldn't want other people to know what that actually was. It's just for connecting all the pieces together here. We'll get to what you're talking about, Sean. Um, in the attribute name, what would you have in the attribute name? The color. The color. Could could be. Could be um, so. So the attribute name probably it wouldn't be the word color necessarily. Although it looks like the attribute, it does look like that's the way that would break out. Mm -hmm. So it would be um, so color, style. size, style, um, fabric. Um, Uh, yeah, who knows, okay? 
but there's there's a limited there's a finite number of characteristics about the item that there would that you'd have okay yeah. and this is where you would have an attribute ID you'd have the name which would be the actual name of it and then a description should you have a name and a description yeah, yeah. I, th I think you definitely have to have a name if you're going to have an attribute ID. Otherwise, that would be really magic. Yeah. Okay. And I think, again, I think you might want to force the description of the attribute, not so much for the person who's going to be using this, but for the people who are working on the system, even. It's like, geez, like, I might not know what it means. It might be a very specific thing um, for that particular product. And <laughs> well, yeah, so it could be that you, you, the attribute description is this is a test um, test attribute um, because we're not sure we're going to do it. So McDonald's does this where they do like really weird things. That aren't meant to be, you know, done forever, and, and so sometimes that can be really helpful for. Yeah, like that one. Yeah, that kind of comes and goes. It's almost like it's thing. Okay, so down here in the attribute value table, let's move down there. Attribute value ID. Look at the fields. And here I am thinking, why don't you just get this complicated and don't do it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can begin to see where that attribute value ID is located. Okay. Where is it? So it's connected up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. The attribute value ID is listed in both places. Is there anywhere else you see attribute value ID? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. over there. Right there. So this is kind of the part that begins to connect all the stuff together here. So these need to be present. These need to be present in order for these things to actually begin to work. So if you go to the attribute value ID from here, and it pulls it back to the product, but it can also pull it back to the product type. Okay? okay. So, so again, this is not perfect. It really depends upon how someone would want to use this, but this allows you to be able to get, to ba basically complete the loop. So if you were going to look at the attribute, you could get to the products. You could okay. also get to the product types. Okay, So that's what you really, in normalizing this data this way, you can see that there's some overlap with some of these things. So these attributes and these product IDs and attribute values, they're kind of duplicated a little bit, but these are just fields with numbers in them. So the product attribute values table has two ID numbers in it. The attribute value table has two IDs and then a couple of names. And then the product type attribute value is a connector for the products and the attributes themselves. So each one of these things is just a gear in the database that allows you to get from one place to the other. So now, as I said, there is some overlap here, but let me take you back to uh, Master Driver Matrix. <laughs> overlap? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, you kind of can't avoid it in some ways. 
There you go again. You, you can't avoid it completely. In, in other words, duplicating, you know, some of the information. You really just need to d decide what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So if you're if you're trying to build, you know, a repository and this is for your record collection. Do you care about the user interface? Not really, because it's your record collection. You'll figure out no matter what it is that happens with it, okay? But if you're going to try to sell that to people and have an iPhone app, then you're going to care a lot about the user interface. Yeah, and maybe a little bit less about the, the way the database is organized on the back end. Right. So just kind of keep that in mind here as as you look at this website what i want from each of you is i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to share a document with you that's going to ask you a number of questions and when we meet up on wednesday not next week because there's no class but what i want you to do this is just a starting point i want you to go to this website and I want you to look through this, look through the comments. This is a springboard for other things. I call this the breadcrumb trail. Um, this gets you started, beginning to look at things. You don't have to stop here. You can go here and you could type in product um, schema RDBMS. I'm just going to make this up. I've never done this before. And I'm going to go to the images, and voila, 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 voila. So you could find all kinds of pictures of this stuff. But the cool thing is, you know basically how to interpret these things now. You have the basics. You have the basics, yes. What's with the many to many? Uh, many to many. So many products to many colors. So there could be one pro or yeah, actually that's a really good question. Pro this product color could be related to multiple products, and this product could have multiple colors in it. Right. So like for example, a jacket. Okay. We're not gonna sell just black jackets. Right. <laughs> We might. Okay, go ahead. What about those double lines right there on that connection by where the cursor is? Now that's a really good question. Is that the same? Oh, there's that's more. Two? And I am not sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But you can begin to see that there are. How do you do all things? But you can zoom way in on these things, and you can see these lines. So child ID, parent ID, you can see these different um, names that they're using for things. But don't let this stop you from understanding it just because we didn't cover this in class. You can do that yourself. I mean, what's a child or a parent relationship? This is a very complicated one. <laughs> it looks yeah, like there's really multiple databases. Yeah, but 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 you can you can interpret that already. That's what's fascinating about this. By the color scheme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can begin to make some inferences about this right now. This is not where you would start off trying to figure out a database. Mm -hmm. And so you might start off with one of these, like this metadata. But you don't need to start off with the whole thing. That's never the way any project begins. It starts off incrementally. And that's why Casey and I have been talking about this back there, because it doesn't really make any sense to start typing. It makes sense to start thinking about your data. And what you'll begin to find is that whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, here's the sad part of it. Somebody already did it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's mm -hmm. already been done because once you bake it all down to its simplest forms, 
it's almost always like something else. Almost always. So it sounds like driver matrices or matrices are really complicated until I compare them to candy bars. <laughs> and then <laughs> it's just a candy bar. They come in different sizes and they come out in different years and they have different packages and different stores stores sold them for different prices and some stores have this brand versus and some stores don't have that brand so so think use whatever it is that you can get your arms around everyone I, i'm looking at every single person in this room including chris who's online and i know that you all have this little thing that you try to keep organized it might be your children it might be your nail collection it might be your cars it could be records dvd see who it doesn't even matter but there's all this stuff that you have and you organize that in your head regardless of whatever it is you tell me your clothing where do you put your clothing if you throw it on the floor chances are it's organized on the floor <laughs> dirtiest to cleanest <laughs> or vice versa unknown. <laughs> the unknown <laughs> pile Right, but it gets deep, right? <clears throat> Stuff at the bottom, holy moly. <laughs> okay. I forgot I have that. This is a serious project. I really want you to begin to think about this. Sometimes in classes, you do things, but you don't think about stuff. This is a thinking game, and I want you to begin to think about this, and I want you to begin to try to put your best effort at organizing this in your head i'm not asking you to build an access database now we may want to put paper or pencil to paper and build one of those but i'd prefer to do that together once we all have a decent understanding of this okay mm -hmm. somebody's going to have to clue frederick in on what we just talked about so. <laughs> okay um, questions about this. Um, ER diagrams are a, a technical term, so if you want to see some images for that, that's a clue that you can use to begin to then add in your product, database, or whatever. <coughs> so one thing should lead to another. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? Pretty? Pretty, 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 pretty. Find something that makes sense to you and then try to make, uh, give it some time so that you can um, begin to understand it on your own terms. This is a sample database here. I, 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 t I generally tend not to practice this stuff because I want you to see the real world in its raw, awful forms. But this is a great example of a pretty real thing. Offices, customers, employees, payments, orders, orders, products. So this takes it one step farther. And if this helps you, then find that. It says 1 to N. What's N mean? Nope, it means the opposite. All of them. It means like infinity. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it is, but you can begin to see some of these patterns that'll develop. So if you think about how many how many um, employees could be associated with an office? Yeah. Quite a few, depending on your office. Now. Okay, and what they're saying is that one office, employees can only have one office. Okay, oh. that kind of makes sense in most places. Okay, um, employees can have many customers. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. customers can have many payments. Yes. Okay, customers can have many orders. Yeah. Orders can only have one set of details. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. What about the details? Our products can have many details. Yes. 
Or, yeah. No, that's not true. Many products can have the detail, is what they're saying. See the end? Oh. Yeah. Okay. So you can begin to chase these things down. I don't want to go too crazy about it, but I mean, it's just different ways of describing information. This is kind of cool because it gives you a more real world bear care. These are variable characters, and they can only be 50 characters in length. They've limited them. There's an integer. See those? Let's go over to the order details, the price. They're calling that a double. Okay, why would they call that a double? Double the amount that they bought it for. No, price each. Think about it. Double. Uh, there's, there's two different of them? Exactly. Okay. Because you can come down here, MSRP, uh, buy price, all these different things. There's different ways to describe that data. It could be a number, it could be currency, it just depends upon the database that you're actually Maybe using. Yeah. Yep. So what's a blob? That's a file in between an image file and mm -hmm. some kind of media. Technically called a binary large object and could be media, might be a movie, might be whatever, it could be a Microsoft Word document. Okay? Okay, so this is what I want you to begin to put your arms around a little bit. Um, you don't have to go to these websites that I just went to, but do your own thinking. And I want to be able to have that conversation when we come back after the break. Um, again, I'll push this out to you on the website, class website, and I'll message you as well. Okay? I don't have anything else. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>